Hello everyone, welcome back to ND Audio Walk Dongle Madness and for today's episode, I will be touching on uh, some subject which may be of interest to many of you. I've been getting a lot of uh, questions from uh, people asking me how best do I use this dongle with this device and this and that. So how do we make the best out of all this? Let's find out some of the key elements that make the best out of a dongle. So, a dongle, by definition of dongle madness, has always been powered by the host. And for this particular subject, I will be specifically talking about Android host, which is typically our mobile phone. So, let's have a look here. First and foremost, what kind of Android option do we have? All right. And to make things simple, I'll just bring one example here. Something which is uh, uh, known by many people. LG V50 TeamQ 5G. All right. So what I would like to show here is that first and foremost, right? GSM Arena, as this website that I'm uh, using most of the time, right? will show exactly what type of USB-C is equipped on this phone. So in this case, have a look here, right? It says USB Type-C 3.1, okay? However, does it mean that it will also provide power equal, equivalent to USB 3.0? And this is where you need to check another element which is under charging here. And you would notice this. It says PD 2.0. All right. So what does it mean here? It means that right, this particular phone, LG V50, is in fact not a 3.0 USB power delivery unit. Despite being listed as USB 3.0 and above, it still uses the old. USB 2.0 power, all right? So the next example that I'd like to bring is that another phone, which is also quite popular. Now, we have here Samsung Galaxy S20, very common, right? A lot of people have this S20, and this is how true USB 3.0 would look like. You see here, it says USB Type-C 3.2. So anything 3.0 and above, you could be seeing like, you know, the later model being listed here. And most importantly, under the charging here, it says PD 3.0. So that's the main difference there. And I will show you later how does this translate into real life usage. So when you are selecting your phone, be very wary of that. Because like the V50, Many phones exhibit USB 3.0 or 3.2, 3.1 capable, but not necessarily true with the power delivery of the USB itself. Because the biggest indication, right, would be just like this, another one, which is my own phone that I'm using to record this right now, right? It is uh, USB 3.2, again. And the charging is PD 3.0 as well. Okay. So this is a certified USB 3.0 powered Android phone. Another interesting example which I like to bring, kind of like really weird, but this is happening with some releases of Xiaomi, the later model. This is really interesting actually. As you can see here, for this particular phone, it is listed as USB Type-C 2.0. However, the weird thing is that the power delivery is 3.0. Now, if I read this correctly, it means that despite running on an older configuration of USB 2.0, because this Xiaomi is the, later, the latest version practically, it uses power delivery of 3.0, which makes it equivalent to pretty much Samsung S20 and Sony Xperia 1 4 as seen earlier. Now, I don't have a way to verify this because I don't have this phone. But this is a site which is very good, right, to use, to be used as a guide when choosing 
the type of phone that you want for USB dongle usage. So next, I will show you how does the actual power look like when attached to the phone. One of the more common question that I get regarding the usage of dongle is that how much different does the power variance between a laptop and an Android phone or even an iPhone. So let's find out first how much voltage and perhaps some other details that we can see when attached to a laptop running USB 3.0. So I have here like this laptop and I will just simply connect it in while attached to Centrance Deck Port HD, which is the most power hungry dongle that I have in my collection. Okay. See that? All right. Especially this part here. It says 5.11V. Remember that. And it shows 20A ampere. So that's the number when attached to a laptop running USB 3.0. That sort of power that we are getting at. And at this point, I believe this USB is also running at 900 MA of wattage. Now, let's just put this aside. And then we will connect a typical Android phone running USB 2.0 I have here Redmi Xiaomi Redmi Note 7 actually and I will attach it here now like this it's not playing up yet okay let's wiggle it a bit okay so you see that? That's the difference. So immediately, we are seeing that the power delivery is at exactly 5 volt. And the ampere is at around pretty much similar, I would say. Up and down, up and down, seemingly a bit unstable. Okay. Regardless whether it is in playback mode or just uh, idling like this, the power will remain consistent. I have tested that. Next, we're going to do an even older USB 2.0 from my Sony Xperia Compact. X Compact. Let's see how the guy, does this guy behave while trying to drive the Centrance Deckport HD, which is crazily powerful. <laughs> Interesting, right? It's blinking, not even powering up properly. Because why? This USB 2.0, which is perhaps uh, built on an older generation of USB 2.0, does not even have ample power to even light up that port HD. So that's the worst case scenario. And I think it uh, the same would be applicable if were to be subjected to some older phone running on micro USB. Okay. Now, let's just find out how does it run on USB 3.0 with power delivery of 3.0 as well. This is my Sony Xperia 1.4. You see that? 5.2 volt. That is actually higher than my laptop just now, if you were to check back. So that is very interesting, right? What it means to me is that it is entirely possible to run any dongle because if this phone can run even higher voltage for DeckPort HD, which is known to be the most demanding dongle right now for power draw at 5.2 volt, a few points higher than my laptop USB 3.0, it can it can literally run anything as equally good as USB 3.0 from a laptop, provided that 
it runs on USB exclusive mode and we will get to that after this. Alright, so we have seen the type of hardware and the kind of selection that we have for Android device and by now probably you already have your phone in your hand. The next stage will be how to find the best software in order to get 100% out of it. So in this case, I would show you that first and foremost, right? as you can see on your screen right now, there's two apps that I would recommend. First would be Hibi, music player, right? And I have already installed this, but what you can do is that just install it on your machine. And this is the best part about Hibi music is that it is free. All right, that's number one. A second option would be UAPP. And this UAPP is actually USB Audio Player Pro. Unfortunately, this UAPP is not free, but it is one of the most powerful and most common use app to maximize audio playback on Android device. Okay, so now you have both installed. I will first show you the, the best way to use Hebe Music. And for this particular purpose, First of all, I will exhibit here a simple dongle, pretty much uh, one BRMS uh, 7Hz 71. It is very basic. It doesn't have uh, external volume adjustment or anything like that. And I will connect it here. Okay. So I will just open up Hebe Music. And the first thing that needs to be configured on Hibi Music will be going to settings here. First thing to do will be exclusive HQ USB audio access. Enable that. And click OK. Immediately, it will ask, allow the app Hibi Music to access the USB device. Click OK. That's the first stage. The next stage will be to go into USB output setting. And then select USB audio performance mode here. Okay, that's the second step, right? The next step will be because this is a simple USB dongle, just leave the, left, the rest of the setting as it is, like this unlock volume. And when we do playback, for example, like this one. Just pick one song here. You would notice that right now it says USB here, and if I click here, it would show the type of USB attached to it. In this case, it's 7 Hz 01, or should I say 71. So, practically, my dongle now runs on USB exclusive mode. Alright? So, when I change the volume here, you would notice, right? Automatically, it will show a refined volume adjustment. The next thing that I would like to show is that there are a few options for running volume mode for this type of dongle, which is a non-independent volume adjustment. Click on volume mode here. The default setting is automatic most of the time. So when I select automatic, you would notice that Hebe is now running on 32 step volume. This is the default setting. And it goes all the way to 32 for maximum, which is 100%. However, running in this mode, sometimes the volume jump can be a bit too big. And if you feel that the volume jump is a bit too big, then what you can do is that, like while listening to your phone, to a threshold which seems to be just about nice, and it's just about right much slightly one click to the loudness level that you required, then you can go back to settings and then go back to volume mode and now choose software volume. So when you do that, what it does is that you do see here, it shows USB software volume at 120 
or should I say 128 maximum. So this maximum is basically playing on the threshold of your previous maximum that you have set under the default setting. So from this point onward, you can adjust the volume at very fine level. And at least for me, this type of volume adjustment is very important because it allows for fine tuning. And at least for me as well, the joy of listening to music is the ability to get precise level of loudness, especially when I am using highly sensitive material. <coughs> the setback for this setting is that one thing. When I go into, for example, like um, standby mode, right? Close the screen and everything. Unfortunately, this volume rocker here will not work. So that is pretty much a shame. And this is where we will switch to another device, which is the UAPP. So when the dongle is already attached like this, open UAPP, USB audio device initialized, as you can see here. Now it is basically like Hebe music just now, running on USB exclusive mode. Right, and I will just pick one music here, click play, right, and now when you click the volume rocker, one of the first setting that you can do is that make sure that you are running on bit perfect mode, click on. So it is already in USB exclusive mode when you click OK the first time. The next one is that to select it to run on bit perfect. What it does is that it prevents resampling of uh, the audio source. Usually when on Android playback plays uh, even lossless file or even any uh, source file, it will try to resample to 48 hertz. You don't want that, right? You just want it to play as it is. So Beat Perfect is the purpose for that. This setting is automatically enabled in Hebe, where else in UAPP, you can toggle it on and off. Another element which is important as well, I'll just show you what is important, all right? I don't use EQ, so I never touch that part. You can also use here like the hardware volume, which can be controlled. And this is important because sometimes, right, for safety reason, UAPP seems to have a fail safe mode to prevent the volume from getting too high. But if you are running on, let's say, for example, attached to a heavier partner, what you can do is that adjust hardware volume to the max at your own risk. Okay. And another element which is important as well is here when go to settings under volume. First thing is that make sure it is hardware volume control if available. So which means that UAPP now is capable to detect if the attached dongle have volume adjustment hardware, it will now allow, it will actually disable the volume rocker and will allow the dongle to have control over the volume adjustment. And that depends on two things. First, some dongle like this AP90 it is not independent volume adjustment. So what will happen is that clicking this and this up and down will substitute the volume rocker here remotely. Okay. But if you are running on something which is a uh, dedicated volume adjustment like this Hebe FC4, what will happen is that it will totally lock this UAPP horse 100% and the volume adjustment only works here. So depend on how refined the volume adjustment on the dongle itself, it may work, you know, even better. And that is the reason why I love that Porch HD, because this rotary volume adjustment is just simply unbeatable. It literally allow me to do micro volume adjustment. The next one, also very important, will be volume steps. Why this is important? Again, when we go back. To the volume rocker earlier on right let me just go back you see here the hardware volume control adjustment it moves 
from one level to another. But if you find that that volume adjustment is not refined enough, then it is it can be fixed here. Volume step. Just put it to as high as, as possible at perhaps even 250. For highly sensitive IEM, it works wondrous. So the best part is that when you switch off the screen, unlike Hebe app, this UAPP will still work with the fine volume volume adjustment. So you can just turn off the screen and then allow you know remote adjustment from your dongle or even through the volume rocker here without the worry of getting let's say having have to you know wake it up and then change the volume which is not a great thing so those are the settings which i recommend of course there are many other settings within this app but these are the two that i use the most because using these two app it will allow us to fully maximize on the capability of the dongle okay so there you have it the hardware part and the software part and touching a bit on the hardware part you would notice that i have not shown anything on apple iphone and the reason for that is quite simple really you see back in 2021 i have two iphones which is iphone 8 and iphone 7 the problem that i have with this iphone is that first and foremost it can't even power up this central stack port hd and even uh, let's say let me see here Ovidius B1. These are two of my favorite dongles, right? With the proprietary kind of technology Apple has still stuck to USB 2.0 and I believe even the later model of iPhone still USB 2.0 They have so many restrictions in place. It just doesn't make sense to me to use something is so restricted and As such I have switched fully to Android now. I even have a few Android phones and of course, as I mentioned earlier, the key thing is that to get the right hardware. And with this regard, in my case, I use uh, Sony Xperia 1 IV. All right? That one you offers USB 3.0. Now that I already have the hardware, the next part will be to choose the right kind of software to maximize it. And when I say maximize it, there's two elements to it. First would be to run unrestricted power from the android host in traditional android setup there's such a thing called as src so android src practically limits the power being drawn to the host uh, to the attached dongle so by using usb exclusive mode that limitation is removed so you can expect full performance from that particular dongle especially power hungry ones like this Okay, the next one is that to run bit perfect mode and bit perfect is such an important thing because it will prevent Android hosts from resampling the source file and we don't want resampling because resampling is literally like an extra processing which could degrade the intended source quality. Okay, so there you have it. Two element and two aspect of why I prefer using dongle with mobile phone. And the next thing is that perhaps uh, for my own usage when I first started Dongle Madness, the whole idea behind it is that I am always a portable person. You don't see me right, using desktop setup or anything like that. And I believe that with the kind of technology advancement that we have nowadays, right, with everything getting you know upgraded and then advanced even from last year compared to this year we have very powerful dongles that can deliver like desktop quality kind of performance it is entirely possible to avoid using laptop at all attach it to a proper dongle to your phone and then unleash the potential of it using the correct software and with that it is definitely a result which I can be satisfied with. Okay, I hope that this video has been useful to you. And of course, I highly appreciate any kind of feedback that you have or any kind of information that would you would like to add to help the rest of the community. It does not necessarily mean that whatever that I have mentioned is holistic. I could have missed a few
few some element or some part or I could have been mistaken. I am still a human after all, but I do appreciate your feedback on this. All right. Until next uh, episode of Andy Odo Dongle Madness. Have a good day. Bye.